Hello, saints, peace, love, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. I hope everybody's doing well out there. In this study, we're going to be looking at the subject of backsliding. What is backsliding? Is backsliding possible? In order to answer these questions and some other concerns involving backsliding, we need to turn to, of course, God's Word, the King James Version Bible. And as always, we have to use right division. We need to ask the who what, where, how, why type of questions. Second Timothy 2.15, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul reads, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the phrase backsliding is not found in any of Paul's books. So that gives us our first very big clue. The second big clue found in God's Word is that the phrase backsliding is found throughout Scripture written to, for, and about the Jews, the twelve tribes of Jacob, the woman. Okay, so our first two clues we know, according to right division, that the term backsliding seems to be in the prophetic program and not in the mystery program. But we still need to continue our investigation. Okay, so let's follow some other clues. Let's take a look at the scriptures that include the phrase backsliding. And for that, we need to turn, guess where? The Old Testament. In fact, the phrase backsliding is found 12 times in 12 verses. And they're all in the Old Testament. Nine times in the book of Jeremiah. And three more times in the book of Hosea. Let's take a look at just a few of the verses to get the context of how the phrase backsliding was used. Okay, Continuing our investigation in Jeremiah 3 verse 6, The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot and I said after she had done all these things turn thou unto me but she returned not and her treacherous sister Judah saw it and I saw for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery you see this is the woman Israel she committed adultery on God I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So the tribe of Judah saw what she was doing and even did the same thing and went out and played the harlot and cheated with other gods on the one true and living God. In Jeremiah 3 again in verse 9, And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she, Israel, the woman, defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and stocks. And yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. We go to Jeremiah verse 12, Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Jeremiah 3 verse 14, Turn, O backsliding Israel. Children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Who are these children? The nation of Israel, the woman. God is married to her, and I will take you, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will 
give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3 and verse 22, Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. In Jeremiah 8 and verse 5, Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. We go to Jeremiah 31 and verse 22. How long wilt thou go about? O oh, thou backsliding daughter, for the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Jeremiah 49 and verse 4. Wherefore glorious thou in the valleys, thy following, flowing valley, O oh, backsliding daughter, that trusted in her treasure, saying, Who shall come unto me? You see, there's just a few of the verses that contain the phrase backsliding. And also, like I said earlier, you're going to find three more times in the book of Hosea. Each time the word backsliding is used, it was used to demonstrate how the woman, Israel, the nation of Israel, the tribes of Jacob, his seed line, was being unfaithful. They were cheating on God. They were backsliding away from him. Now, looking at the graphics on the screen... We, we know that the book of Jeremiah and Hosea, both regarding the Jews, are in the dispensation of what administration? Well, we know, looking at the dispensation, uh, at the chart, we're looking at the dispensation of law, Israel, the prophetic program. This is before Paul, before the mystery program, before salvation is seen in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. In the prophetic program, or in the dispensation of law, they had to continue to perform works in order to prove their faith in God. It is a faith plus works program. We know that. So the key here is that they had to continue to be faithful unto God. They had to continue. They had to endure until the end, you see. And we saw in Jeremiah that some of them were not enduring. They were not being faithful. They were not continuing in their works program. They were backsliding further and further away from God. And this was revealing what they really thought about the God of Israel. Backsliding is directly connected to a works-based program. And you'll notice that the denominations today out there, that they, they teach backsliding, also teach a works-based faith. They also teach salvation can be lost. Or they might even be teaching the partial rapture theory and all the other several different nonsensical teachings that are out there today. Another very common reason people get confused about backsliding, the, the word and the, the idea behind it, is because they don't rightly divide the phrase that Paul uses in 2 Thessalonians 2, the phrase falling away or apostasia. Paul was talking about Daniel's 70th week. And for those of you who went through the study on the book of Acts or watched my video on the falling away, you already know all about the apostasia that's going to take place in the first half of Daniel's 70th week. So, will backsliding be possible during the seven years of tribulation? Absolutely. Because God will turn back to dealing with Israel in a faith plus works administration. The very same one that they were in prior to our dispensation of grace. Prior to Paul. Prior to the mystery. That's why it's so very important to learn the basics of right division and dispensations before you do anything else. Our Apostle Paul tells us just how important it is to build on the right foundation. There's only one. 1 Corinthians 3 in verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me, Paul. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul tells us what foundation that we need to build on. The foundation laid is Jesus Christ. Paul was the master builder on that foundation. So we're to build off of what Paul reveals to us through the mystery of the gospel of the grace of God, our gospel for today, okay? So getting back to backsliding, 
We've already seen that the idea of backsliding was not used to explain how some of the Jews, it was used to explain how some of the Jews were not continuing in this system of faith plus works dispensation, the, the Mosaic law. Their backsliding ultimately led to God issuing them, the woman, a bill of divorce. And they've been backsliding ever since. And some of them will also backslide during Daniel's 70th week, the falling away, when God allows the delusion to take place. Part of the delusion, the deception, will involve the Antichrist's ability to produce signs and wonders, tricking people into backsliding away from the one and only true living God. We read about that in 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 9, even him, this is speaking about the Antichrist, this is Paul speaking about the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them, them, those in Daniel's 70th week, okay, strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Unbelievers will be led into false beliefs by the Antichrist during Daniel's 70th week, by Satan, okay? Because they refused to believe the truth when they had the chance to believe. God has given them more than enough chances. 2,000 years worth of chance. Regarding backsliding or falling away in the body of Christ today, in the dispensation of the grace of God, Paul never once uses the phrase backsliding. He does mention the idea of backsliding or falling away, but he was talking about the apostasia. He was talking about those in Daniel's 70th week. Never once does Paul ever say that anyone in the body of Christ can backslide or lose their salvation. In fact, Paul teaches us how we're sealed in Christ Jesus and how it's not us that keeps us sealed. It's Jesus who keeps us sealed. And let's look at that. We're sealed in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Corinthians 1.22 Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts? Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Nowhere in Paul's 13 books does he talk about us being unsealed or resealed by the Holy Spirit or backsliding. In fact, Paul tells us something even more that seals the deal. Look at what Paul says in Romans 11. This is a very good verse to memorize and take it to heart, especially when the enemy plays mind games with you about your security in Christ Jesus. Romans 11:29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Now, repentance means to change your mind. Here in verse 29, Paul tells us that God does not give you a gift, a gift of salvation, and then ask for it back later on. It's a gift without repentance. It's yours to keep forever. It's a free gift. Another perfect example that you cannot lose salvation. Remember, it's Jesus Christ's faith. It's his faithfulness that keeps you sealed in him. His faith. We see that in Romans 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Whose blood? Jesus' blood. His blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of who? Of him which believeth in Jesus. 
Galatians 3.22, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus, you see, it's his faith here, the faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Jesus' faith is given to us that believe. His faith. Again, our Lord's faith is the subject here in that verse. It's by his faith that he would, all the things that he did for us would be the final payment for all sin. Death, burial, resurrection. It's not our faith, but his faithfulness that keeps us sealed. And again, we see the part that we play. Salvation was made complete by, first by our Lord Jesus' faith, death, burial, resurrection, and then by our belief in what he did for us. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. In Philippians 3, 9, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Okay, it's not our righteousness, which is of the law, but or works, and so on. But that which is through the faith of Christ, his faith, that righteousness, which is of God by faith. Our gospel for today, we're saved in Christ Jesus by faith without works. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit the moment we believe on Jesus Christ and sincerely in, 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 in sincerely and in order to believe on Jesus Christ first you have to see or hear the gospel of salvation we go to 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you this is Paul speaking now which also ye have received and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Why does he say that? Unless ye have believed in vain? Because there were some of them, if you continue reading on in that chapter, that didn't believe in the resurrection. They believed in Jesus. They believed he died, but they didn't believe in the resurrection. See, they believed in vain. That's what Paul is talking about. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's our gospel for today. And we're saved by faith on Jesus Christ. Through faith, without works, or laws, or anything else. It's by believing on Jesus Christ and what he did for us. First, you have to realize that you're lost in sin. You have to realize that you need a savior right there has to be a reason why you need a savior and in order to realize why you need a savior you have to understand that you're lost in sin that your future only contains God's wrath and in order to escape from God's wrath God gave us his son and through him and belief on him and what he did for us is that salvation granted to you as a gift and when you believe on that sincerely and understand what he did for you sincerely and understand what he did understand that you need a savior in the first place you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and you can never be unsealed and what keeps you sealed Jesus Christ himself keeps you sealed his faith his faith keeps you sealed in his body you cannot stay saved based on your own faith. Your faith is not going to keep you saved because your faith wavers from day to day. Does it not? We go through life and our faith sometimes from one day to the next, depending on what happens to us in this world, will waver from day to day. But his faith, our Lord's faith, does not waver. And it is by his faith that we are kept sealed in his body. He cannot lose you. You cannot backslide out of salvation. You cannot fall away out of salvation. It is impossible. If that was possible, that means that our Lord Jesus Christ isn't capable of keeping us in his body. And that would make him not God, would it not? But since he is God, he does have the power and the faithfulness to keep us sealed. We can't be lost. We can't backslide. We can't fall away. In Romans 4, 5, 
but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the, justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man who to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ. You see that? By the faith of Jesus Christ, his faith, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ Jesus of Christ his faith again faith of Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified Galatians 3:11 but that no man is justified by the law in in the sight of God it is evident for the just shall live by faith 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Titus 3.5 Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. It's not by our works or our righteousness, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, if our Lord Jesus Christ is the one keeping us sealed, then how would it be possible for us to backslide away from him? There's only two options we have. Either we're in Christ Jesus or we're out of Christ Jesus. We can't be both at the same time. You can't backslide in and out of salvation based on your works or what you do. You're either in or you're out. Period. Once again, the phrase backsliding was used to describe the Jews who fell away because they were no longer producing the works needed to be justified in God. God called them adulterers, he called them a, a cheating woman. He always references Israel as his wife, the woman, the same woman in Revelation 12. We, we studied that. You see, they backslid from the one true God by worshiping other gods. They were deceived. They committed apostasia, falling away. So in closing, when Paul used the phrase apostasy or falling away in 2 Thessalonians, he was speaking about, once again, nation of the Jews, the woman, going through Daniel's 70th week, which is about to begin. Paul never once said those of us in Christ Jesus could ever backslide out of him or lose our salvation. Not once. Paul doesn't talk about our, uh, uh, he does talk about our judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. But the judgment seat of Christ has nothing to do with our security in Christ Jesus or our sins. Our sins won't be judged because they've already been paid for, paid in full at the cross. Amen. The blood paid for it. The topic at our judgment at the judgment seat of Christ will be rewards or the lack thereof based on what we do with the gospel of the grace of God, how we build on that foundation that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9 through 11. So, you see, if, we, if you continue to study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, the knowledge that you have will indeed protect you when false teaching comes your way. Now, I pray that this study has been a blessing for somebody out there. More proof that you cannot lose your salvation. You cannot backslide out of salvation. You cannot fall away. You're not part of the apostasia. You're not going to be part of that. All those terms are for the nation of Israel about their program, prophetic program, dispensation of the laws, and so on and so on. And that's obvious when you study the context. And you understand how God has been dealing with the nation of Israel versus the body of Christ. Two different programs, administrations, dispensations, for two different groups of people in two different periods of time. So with that, unto Christ Jesus be all the glory and praise. In him are we say we're sealed for eternity. Amen? Amen.